838. Let's have a chat with Mark, our health correspondent, who joins us again this evening. And Mark, all these high numbers are having such an impact on frontline NHS services, aren't they? They are, and consistently high numbers, it should be said. And it's impacting on every part of the NHS, social care, community services, GPs, but in particular, as you say, frontline services. Ambulances struggling to get to patients on time and hospitals really, really busy at the moment. As part of our series of looking at pressures in Sussex, I've been back to the Royal Sussex County Hospital in Brighton, where we first filmed right at the height of the first wave. At the start of the pandemic, we filmed in the intensive care unit at the Royal Sussex County Hospital in Brighton. 18 months later, and I'm back to meet the same team to ask how they're coping today. The first time we met was in the first wave of the pandemic. Uh, and we didn't really, you know, we were responding then to something that we'd never seen before. And in a sense, we are today. I mean, this is the most difficult, uh, I think, the, uh, the most difficult part of, of care that the NHS has ever seen. And the challenge is trying to get all of our elective work through. We're obviously a tertiary centre here, um, so we've got lots of trauma, cardiac, all of the usual problems, um, and on the backdrop of still having COVID patients, so it's, it's challenging. I was taken aback at how busy they were today. 18 months ago, it was almost exclusively COVID patients, but now the hospital is full, thousands of us are waiting for operations, and their A&Es are busier than ever. It's been really a lot of pressure, Mark. It's been tough and it's been different. So we've seen different pressure in different waves. Um, now the pressure is making sure that the patients who've been waiting at home, we're trying to get them in as quickly as we can to have their procedures done. But that's challenging in terms of the emergency admissions, but also we're still caring for COVID patients. And if the hospitals are challenged, so too the ambulance service. Last month, they took 20,000 more calls than in October 2019, and they want us to think about how we use 999. If it's a life-threatening emergency, so things such as a heart attack, unconscious, uh, chest pain, shortness of breath, then absolutely 999 uh, is appropriate. But 111 are uh, within the same organisation regionally. We can, we can absolutely help. So we get a, a significant amount of duplicate calls. It's, it re does therefore block the phone lines at times. And what we would ask is that people only call back if their uh, patient's condition is worsening. Uh, we do prioritise every call that comes into us and we, and we dispatch them on a priority basis. All this week I've heard words like challenged and exhausted, but I've also heard how NHS staff have stepped up to those challenges. The question is perhaps how much longer can they do that in the face of unrelenting workloads and not knowing when or if things will get easier. Mm, that's a difficulty, isn't it? And Indeed. as we've just seen, the hospital in Brighton is really busy at the moment. And coincidentally, because it's Thursday, we've got the latest hospital we do, data. We do. And we can give you those figures for the number of patients in hospital with COVID in our region tonight. Currently 314 with 23 requiring extra help for ventilation. We have seven hospital trusts in our region and we can break that down a little bit. So the trust where I was filming today have 86 patients, nine on ventilation. East Sussex, 56. They've got two hospitals. Medway, a single hospital with 33 patients. Patients. But it's not just those numbers, it's the impact those COVID patients have on the hospital's ability to function. Bed space, staff availability, keeping staff and patients safe from more COVID infection and trying to do normal business as you've just heard in Brighton. That's a real significant challenge. As I said, I was taken aback by how busy they were mm. at the Royal Sussex. They're not alone, everyone is busy and it's partly because of those high rates. And their final bit of advice would be get your vaccination jab and they all insist we should also get our booster jab, Natalie. Mark, thank you.